And one of the things that I think you and I like vibe with so well, and I didn't understand why something doesn't, didn't work. And so like, so right before I met you, I was doing advertising for, you know, a lot of coaching clients and they would bring me these funnels that started with a lead magnet and they were trying to book a call. Right. And so I was booking them lots of calls, but I couldn't get those people to like actually show up. Like the worst thing that would happen is like, actually people would get on the phone and they were like, who are you? Wait, why are we talking? Or they would just ghost or just not show up. And so I was like struggling with that because I was like, why the heck? Because all of these, I mean, these are people who came from all of these big coaching programs and was like, this is the funnel that we're building. And like my background was television, right? So a, diff- a little bit different advertising than internet marketing. And so I was like trying to figure it out. And so I was like trying to use my TV brain. I'm like, okay, I, I was like, you know, if I was at it from like a TV standpoint, how could I get people to show up for the call? And so I put in like a middle of funnel ad strategy and a top of funnel ad strategy. And it seemed to work. Like I was making people watch a certain percentage of three videos before presenting them with the call and the show up rates went up and everything started getting better. But then I started talking to you and your team whenever I was working with one of my specific clients. And I got to tell you, all of a sudden, everything clicked. And so I kind of want to talk a little bit about that because, you know, whenever I came into it, funnels were all new to me, right? In TV, we don't really have, you know, funnels like that. And, but I do, I did understand the difference between marketing and sales. And so I think that you do this so really well. Like I am always singing your praises. My students know that I am like one of your biggest fans because of the differences between knowing whether you want to build a strategy that's going to get you sales or whether you're going to build a strategy that is going to scale and allow you to build your list and all of that stuff. Because I see so many people coming into the program and they're like, my funnel's not converting. And what they're trying to do is they're, they're, they actually have a list building funnel and they're trying to book phone calls. So can we just jam a little bit about, you know, how maybe, you know, you stumbled across that because like you are like top in the industry when it comes to helping figure out, like, do you need a sales funnel or do you need a marketing funnel? Yep. Cool. I would love to talk about that. Yeah. Cool. So what is like, what is the one thing that you see so many people when they're coming to you and is it the fact that they have the wrong type of funnel or is it more messaging? They go hand in hand. When you start talking, like, so if a client comes to me and they say, Hey, Joel, I want to do, you know, I want to, I, it, there's a couple different reasons why somebody would come to me and they say, Hey, I need more leads. Like I need more, you know, sales calls, or I want to launch this new offer. I want to launch a new high ticket offer, right? Those are kind of the two primary buckets. They've got something existing or they're starting brand new, right? When you, everything comes down to, uh, I, I am not a big advocate of funnels anymore. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I grew up in the world of funnels. Uh, I mean, before I even jumped into internet marketing, uh, I had no idea what a funnel was, but um, I did sales presentations. I, I, I was a sales engineer selling commercial heating and cooling equipment to hospitals and schools for all these big commercial construction projects. And when I was trying to grow my own book of business, our primary method of like landing new projects was the dog and pony show. So we would bring in these manufacturers that we represented and I would have to book demonstrations for them. So I'd go to my small book of customers and say, Hey, can we come in and do a presentation in exchange for time? We'll buy lunch. Like that was it. And it was a long grind. Uh, and, uh, I mean, over three years, like it was a slow, slow churn. It was a slow, slow growth. And then I decided one day I said, I'm, I'm sick of this. Like I, these sales presentations are not effective at all. Like I'm seeing people fall asleep. They very rarely ever turned into <laughs> and any ever turned into business. And so I started doing my own sales presentations. And so um, as soon as I did my own sales presentations and I became a little bit more direct with my, uh, with my presentations, lo and behold, our, my business exploded. So the more, like, some people call us lazy marketers because we try to get the most amount, uh, um, mo- most out of what we were trying to do um, with the least amount of effort. 
And I have found time and time again that when you develop sales funnels versus marketing funnels, and there is a clear difference, that is when you get the big the big jumps, right? A sales funnel makes an offer right away. Like they are either buying or they don't buy. Think e-commerce, right? You see all these ads for these products, right? And we were conditioned in the world of internet marketing and and uh, and digital marketing, especially with info products. That, no, you got to do lead magnets and then you got webinars. You've got, and they all have their place. Like if you're trying to scale, like, okay, great. Then there is a time and place for generating leads because yes, you do have a larger market who's not ready to buy right now. But if you are launching a new offer, like that's the first thing that you need to test. You better get that in front of as many people as possible instead of trying to, you know, bring them in through a free, you know, free report or whatever it is that, that they're not going to consume. And so my mentality shifted when I really understood the difference between marketing funnels and sales funnels. And when I put my focus 99% of the time towards sales funnels, that's when everything changed. Yep. So let's talk about, let's talk about that because one of the most effective things that I learned from you with this particular client, when we started working together, like whenever, like you guys were helping my specific client with this one thing, everything all of a sudden just clicked when it came to like the whole sales funnel thing. And I literally like now all of my agency clients, like I have them running the same thing where it's like, <laughs> and, and they're getting, you know, like my agent, like the, the handful of agency clients that I have, they're all dialed in. And it's all because of like, I'm helping them with their power offers and I'm helping them with, you know, the mini webinar versus like the full, like the full on webinar. And it's just, it's just working so, so good. That's why I like seeing your praises all the time, because like I've seen firsthand, this is not something. And, and I also wanted to show, and I'll, I'll show you guys some of, some of the things, how I'm actually using what Joel teaches, even in my low ticket offer. Cause you guys know that you know, I don't really have like a high, high ticket other than my agency, but my agency has been booked for like two years. And so, but the, the thing that Joel does really, really well is helping people craft that perfect message to where you're just saying like, Hey, if I offer to do blank, blank and blank, like literally just straight up asking people in the ad. Um, and what we're talking about is power offers. And what I really love is that there's two different types of power offers that, that you do, right? Like that you teach. It's like, one's like a self-identifying power offer. And then one's just a straight up, like, you know, Hey, if I offer to do this, so one is kind of like, makes people feel like, yeah, like I want that. What is it? Brett Kokal, right? That's one of the best like self-identifying power offers I've ever seen. I use it like as an example for like all of my students. I'm like, dude, this is like, cause like, I, like, I don't know, it just, it just impact, it's very empowering. So talk about like how you came up when, cause I know you started with the power offer, right? And then mm -hmm. you started, you, then you started doing the second one. Yeah. So to elaborate and give a little bit more context, like as we're talking about messaging right now, um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of finish that origin story. Cause this is where I came up with power offers. So back in 2016, 2015, uh, I was growing my agency primarily through joining really, really expensive masterminds. Um, and, you know, I was running my own, I was the webinar agency. So we ran webinar funnels for my clients. I ran my own webinar funnel and, and it was embarrassingly uh, horrible. I mean, it was just really, really expensive to acquire a customer. We were profitable. Uh, it was costing us like $400 per application. Thankfully, most of those applications would close because they're so they were so um, well indoctrinated. Uh, but I couldn't scale it. Anytime I wanted to spend more money, like my ads would like quadruple. It's like I was limited at just a couple hundred dollars a day, so just couldn't scale. And so I started, you know, I hired people to help me, you know, review my own webinar because I was too close to it. And you know, nobody was really giving me that winning advice. I was hiring different ad agencies. I was like, okay, you know, maybe I just need to hire a different agency to run the ads or whatever. I tried everything. And finally, I was laying in bed one night and I, uh, you know, like they always say, like, you have to figure out the pain that keeps your prospect, you know, laying awake in bed at night, like can't sleep. This is exactly what I was doing. I was literally <laughs> laying awake in bed. I was staring at the ceiling fan. We had just moved into a brand new house that was three times more expensive. We just had our first child and my wife wasn't working. Like I was the full, I was the sole provider. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm sweating. Like I'm, I just, I was I was exhausted. I had spent a year, two years and tens, probably over a hundred thousand dollars on masterminds and coaching. And that's not even counting all the ad spend and stuff and through the testing. And, you know, yes, we would get clients, but I'm like, it shouldn't be this difficult. Like I started to get super complex in my funnels. I'm like, this is not right. Like this is like, I just, in my gut, I'm like, this does not have to be this difficult. 
So I was reading this book, How to Create Irresistible Offers by Bob Lai. And on like the third or fourth page is a chart that said, and I'm always going to, I, I get tripped up in my words because Bob is a technical writer and he's a copywriter as well, but like he needs to come up with a simplified way of explaining this. But essentially it was a chart that said, um, the cost to acquire a customer is going to be the least expensive, the more direct your copy is. As you start to get more brand driven in your copy and your messaging, your cost per acquisition is going up. And it makes total sense. It's like, if you put out a piece of content and it's primarily offer driven, your cost per acquisition is gonna be the lowest. But let's say you put out a piece of blog content that is all you know, teaching and educating, which has its place by the way, which is more marketing driven, your cost per acquisition is gonna be highest because there's not a clear call to action to, it's not driven to generate customers. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like this is it. And that was the aha moment that I had with like, you know, it sounds stupid right now to say it out loud, but it's like, okay, webinars are a marketing funnel. They're not really a sales funnel. Like it's really a marketing funnel. Cause I was, you know, I'm educating, educating, educating at the end. We make, we make an offer. So there's a time and place in a webinar and I know exactly where it fits now in the overall growth of a, of a company. And, um, you know, and so that night I shut down my webinar funnel. I ran downstairs and I said, you know what? The reason why my cost per acquisition was so high was because I was over educating my audience. Like I bet, I bet that there's enough people out there because my webinar was like, Hey, here's why you need to do a, a webinar. Here's why it's so great. Blah, 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 blah. Because people yeah, were they, trying to come in because they wanted to know the stuff that was in your webinar, right? They weren't necessarily like signing up to hear your offer. They were signing in to get the yes. free thing, right? They were just signing up to basically rip you off of your information. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like, that's why, I mean, you don't put content out there to get ripped off, but you know, you educate and there are people who just want to be educated and you know, there's no urgency for them. And so in my mind, like I was going after the wrong segment of my market. I was going after the segment that needed to be educated. And so many of us, like we don't need to go after that market. Like there's a segment, Chet Holmes has this thing called the buyer's pyramid, which says three to 10% of your audience of any market is in a buying mode right now. And that is the segment that we all need to target. Then you get into, and you start to expand your market. There's like 60% of your market that needs more educating and like they are interested, but they're not yet ready to buy. And so my webinar was targeting that 60%. Like I was trying to educate them, educate them, educate them and hope and just hope enough people would, would love my content. Okay. Hey, let's, let's book a call. But you know, it's very difficult to manufacture urgency when somebody isn't in an urgent situation. So what I learned at that point was that I needed to change my messaging and target that three to 10% of the people who are ready to buy now. Well, what in my mind, I had to ask questions. So that top three to 10% of the people who are ready to buy right now, like what's their situation? Well, number one, they probably already know about webinars. Number two, they probably want a webinar. Number three, they might have tried and failed already. And number four, they just want it to work as fast as possible. That is a completely different message than who I was targeting in my, in my own webinar. Cause I was trying to educate the rest of the market and say, this is why you need to consider a webinar. So that other segment, that top three to 10%, they had a much more urgent need. So all of that hit as soon as I read that, that, um, that chart from Bob Lai. So I ran downstairs and said, you know what? I bet there's people who need a freaking webinar right now. So I ran downstairs, opened up my laptop and I, I, I published a power offer post, uh, the first version of what I now call a power offer to my warm audience. And I said, Hey, um, I've got a special offer. It was end of the year. So it was December. I said, um, you know, if I offered to write you a, a webinar in the next, um, I don't know, 24 hours, this is a very rough version. In the next 24 hours, the next one week, I can't remember. Oh no, it was before the end of the year. That's what it was. If I offered to write um, a webinar for you, guaranteed to convert, you'll, it'll be in your hands, ready to run by the end of the year. Would you take me up on that offer, right? So that's the framework of the power offer. If I offer to do X, Y, and Z in a certain time frame, or this time frame is really, really critical. If I offer to do X, Y, and Z for you without certain objection, right? Would you take me up on that offer? Like that's the power offer. Like that's that's really it. Um, and by within 48 hours of me publishing that post, I had landed a $25,000 client. They paid a, an $11,000 deposit and had another one on the waiting list. So I, I booked $50,000 in business within 48 hours. And 
the game changed. I then took that, I ran that as an ad. Um, I then learned how to take that ad and build a very, very simple, you know, minimum viable funnel on the back end because writing power offers to a warm network versus a cold network is a slightly different. So you need a little bit different conversion process. But in essence, that was the birth of the power offer. And it has completely changed the game for uh, for me and for hundreds and hundreds, thousands of clients at this point. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I actually, like I was ready, I was ready for Joel. Cause I knew, cause like, I think, I think Joel, like I I've sent you this before. Cause like, even just like listening, like guys, this is what, this was like on my personal profile. Like literally I just posted this, like 102 comments. I literally booked out this six week intensive with this one post using Joel's like, and I probably didn't even do it all like perfect. Like, you know, Joel would have probably told me to do it. But I literally just kind of like just listened to his framework and I literally booked all I, I think I was looking for 20 people to fill to fill the spots in my webinar because it was a beta test with one post. Like that's mm -hmm. how that's how like powerful this is. We didn't run an ad to it. I literally posted it on my personal profile and then had people raising their hand saying, yes, I want you to be my personal ad consultant to help me launch my webinar ads. <laughs> So cool. Like it's like ma it's like magic. <laughs> so what did you charge for that beta offer? Um it was four it was four ninety-seven. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So I'm not so I'm not super, super high ticket now. Um, but ever since I do I did that now, I just like have a premium um membership. You don't need to like be high ticket. I mean, yeah, I mean it, it's not necessary to be high ticket. Yes, I mean. I use this for high ticket, but we also use this for our low ticket offers too that we run ads to. So it's it's offer agnostic, meaning it's just meant to get people to raise their hand and say, yes, I am interested. Tell me more. Like, so it doesn't matter what offer you put out there. Like if it's high ticket, low ticket, blah, 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 blah. doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it is just meant to attract buyers. That's the sole purpose. And it's meant to validate your offer because here's the secret. Whenever somebody launches a power offer, they say, oh, it didn't work. It's like, no, like, oh, the power offer doesn't work. It's like, no, you just got the most valuable feedback that will save you years upon years realizing that your offer is not what your audience wants. Like you need to take that and rework it. Like don't build a funnel around it. Like don't try and build all sorts of content to try and sell an offer that's not converting or like you have to understand like your market is telling you exactly, exactly what you need to hear. Like something didn't resonate with them. So don't say the power offer didn't work understand that like you have to learn how to rework that to get people to say, yes, I'm interested. Like there's obviously something that you, um, I'm not blaming that, but like this is the best feedback that you can possibly have. It will save you so much time, aggravation and headache, um, and money by trying to sell an offer that nobody wants. Yeah. And I see, I see that all the time too, like, um, with people that are coming into my premium and we're looking at their sales pages, right. And we're, we're looking at like, why are people not buying? And people always have the misconception whenever I'm like, well, you need to change your offer. They have the misconception that I'm telling them to go and change their program or change their, you know. And, and so do you ever get that like pushback whenever people come in and they're like, well, I've like, you know, worked so much on like perfecting this offer and, you know, and then they just get confused thinking that you want them to change their entire like business, right? So can yeah, you maybe kind of just a little explain, explain maybe like the difference between what we're asking them to do versus what they're at, what, what is involved with changing an offer? We deal with this all the time, all the time. And so uh, I actually am creating a little, uh, we're doing like a, uh, for my high ticket courses group, like, so for people who want to launch a high ticket course, I'm doing this like five day, this five, five part quick start challenge. And today that my content was all about exactly what we're talking about right here. It's redefining your offer based on market feedback. Um, I, I deal with experts all the time, product owners all the time. This is primarily with people who come with me and they say, oh, Joel, you know, I've got, you know, I sold a bunch of this program already through speaking, podcasting, you know, networking, all organic methods, uh, referrals. Um, but I just need you to run ads and I need to, I need to sell more. I, I, I don't want to do that anymore. Like I'm tired of that. And I want to grow through ads and, you know, um, et cetera. I want to scale that one. I'm like, okay, first and foremost, like number one, uh, you have to understand, you have to come in with the expectation that just because your offer sells with all this warm traffic 
it is not necessarily going to sell with cold traffic. And what I mean by that is like, so many people want to sell based on their final end promise. Like what happens at the end of the customer journey? It's like, oh, okay, you're going to, um, you know, scale your agency without doing done, you know, without doing more done for you offers, right? This is the perfect example that I use is, is my buddy, Greg, uh, because he was trying to sell with that promise and it just wasn't resonating. Every time we put out a post trying to sell that offer, even though that's what he did, that's not what people wanted. That's not what they were resonating with. Um, and so he kept trying to do different angles towards that whole like scale without doing done for you. And his agency clients just weren't, his audience just wasn't, wasn't doing it. And so we go through this process where we have to say, okay, we need to rework your offer. Like that doesn't necessarily mean that we change your deliverables. Sometimes it does, but uh, you know, we have to find different demand triggers, different hooks that people are going to say, yes, I want that. Uh, and experts have a hard time swallowing their pride and, and uh, uh, it, it hurts sometime when, sometimes when you tell them that, but a cold audience is so much different than a warm audience. Like you, it, you know this from running Facebook ads, like you have to figure out what's going to stop the scroll and what stops the scroll is something is a surface level pain or surface level desire that they are actively, that they are actively trying to, trying to solve. And if they are like in the case of Greg, are they actively like searching for how do I scale my agency without doing more done for you clients? The answer was no. And so like you have to figure out the right <laughs> offer, the right power offer to get them to stop the scroll. And so uh, there's a delicate balance between um, working with a coach or working with an expert or a product owner and telling them that and getting them to understand that, you know, you can't fall in love with your product yet to fall in love with your customer. So yes, we still might be able to use your coaching program. I'm not saying you have to rewrite your, your entire coaching program, but you have to figure out what people actually want and give that to them first. And, you know, then we can figure out how to connect that to your coaching program, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a, it is a delicate balance because a lot of people don't want to do that. And they're shooting themselves in the foot because, you know, you can't put lipstick on a pig and, and, and think that it's, <laughs> something else, something that it's not. And so, um, and that's yeah. essentially what they're trying to do. Yeah. And it's, so it's always so hard because we all get, you know, emotionally, I think attached to our offers. Cause we, we think we know what people are going to actually respond to. Like, um, like even with me, like I had to test like a couple of different power offers. It's like, you know, you know, the, like the, especially like the angle, like of like, you know, cause a lot of people know me from my $5 ads, you know, so that, that market wants the $5 ads one, another market in, but these are all different types of offers that I can do that go to my same product. And so I think a lot of people just don't look at their business that way. They think of offer product name, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like the offer is like what we're, what, what people are just going to say yes to. So I think that that, I think that, I don't know, like I always get so, so much clarity every time that I listen to you speak about this kind of stuff, because this is, always, these are things too, that are always like changing. And like, we're having to fine tune because like, especially now there's so many people hitting the marketplace that everything is like so saturated and everyone's like copying each other's offers. And, and so that's where I think like even more now messaging and, you know, getting people into, you know, the mini webinars or the mini case studies, you know, just to really show people what it's like to actually work with us. Um, I'm seeing the people that are doing that much more um, than the people who are just, you know, trying to copy, because like doing what you're doing, it like really leaves people vulnerable to who don't really know what they're actually doing. And they're just copying someone else's course and trying to sell it on their own. And, um, that's, that's just one of the things that like, I'm seeing so much, like, especially with like my students, they'll be like, they'll come to me with an offer. And I'm like, well, I've seen that offer like at least 10 times today right? How can we, how can we take that one offer to the next level? Um, what, what, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what do you do when you have like a client who's coming in and let's say their offer is, you know what, I'm going to show you how, cause this is an offer I see all the time. Like I'm going to show you how to get your next five to 15 clients in the next month. Right. Like, I'm yeah. just like, that's an offer. So what do you do when a client comes to you with that type of offer to where it's like, it, it's, it's kind of a marker mark, mark it's cut. Sorry. It's the end of my day. I'm like getting all tongue tied. Would it like whenever someone comes to you with an offer and it's, it's, it's something that's kind of like saturated in, in, in the internet marketing space. Yeah. I call it race to the bottom. Um, and it's, uh, it, 
it's difficult. You know, it's it, it takes a lot of creativity to try and uh, uh, try and outmaneuver what the marketplace is what the marketplace is doing right now. Low ticket is hot. Like so many oh, people yes. are, ta- are talking low ticket, you know, uh, you know, it's you know, book funnels and mini workshops, you know, Justin's program and like, you name it. I mean, I've got now people are launching mighty offers and scary offers all, you know, based on different frameworks, you know, somebody's taking the mini workshops and the power offers and, you know, they're calling them scary offers. They're calling them mighty off. Like you name scary it. Like, offers? <laughs> <laughs> scary offers. Yeah. I heard, heard that yesterday. Um, so, you know, when you reach that type of sophistication and that type of, um, level of offer awareness, Todd Brown calls it the five stages of, of an offer. Uh, it really, the way that you like, eventually your market is going to, you're just going to start coming out with outrageous claims, outrageous claims. Like they're going to become more and more outrageous. And, your market's going to stop believing them. Like it's just going to be so numb that, um, you know, n- doesn't matter what the promise, uh, what the promise is that you make, like it's just going to become totally outrageous. So the way that you really combat that is you have to come up with your own proprietary process and unique mechanism, right? So it's now, how do I get clients through this unique mechanism? How is your unique mechanism so different that it doesn't really matter what the result, it's not based on the like the end promise of how many clients am I gonna get? It's now you need to use this unique mechanism because it provides all these benefits. Um, and so, I mean, it's like the weight loss example. It's like how many how many products came out? Like, um, okay, oh, what was it Oxy? Uh, uh, I can't remember it, but um, oh, geez, I, I wish I could remember it. But it was this like fat burning, you know, supplement that got really, really hot. And uh, you know, it's like, hey, we're gonna show you how to shed X number of pounds in ten days, right? It's like, okay, well, then another product comes out. And I'm gonna show you how to lose fifteen pounds in ten days, then twenty pounds in ten days, then you know, eventually it's just going to be so unbelievable that, you know, no matter what that claim is, it's just not going to be as effective as it was. And so at that point, you really need to figure out what is your methodology? What is your mechanism? What's your proprietary process? And then you sell towards that. And, um, you know, case in point, we ran off, we, we ran traffic to our low ticket offer, the power offer workshop. And the promise that we made was, um, get three to five clients every single month. And to be honest, that promise didn't, it didn't hit well because it's made so it's, it's, it's so competitive now. And so, um, you know, we really need to lean in on, on the mechanism to differentiate why the mechanism is, is better than all these other, all these other claims, all these other promises. So that's, you know, that's what you do when, when it becomes so saturated. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you for answering that. Cause right now me and one of my clients, we're trying to reach because that's what's happening with her offer. Like we ran ads very successfully to this one challenge. And then this last time it did okay, but not as good. And I think it's because like that same offer that we've been running is just now just flooded in the marketplace. And so now we're at that point where we're going to have to sit down and really go through like what you were saying, her mechanism and figure out like, you know, what, is so special about your mechanism that's going to help these people get that that client result and like kind of like market with that um with so many changes like with that's coming um where do you see like you know not only facebook marketing and but like youtube marketing google marketing like how do you see the marketplace changing as we're going into the end of 2021 and 2022 do you do you do you see any trends so far that are going one way or not because right now I think, and it's funny because you, the other day on your podcast, you were talking about trends and I feel it all the time in my premium program because my premium program, there's like four different ad roadmaps that people will follow. Right. And I feel them whenever I can feel the trends because like last fall, everyone were co- was coming in with a webinar this, this entire year, almost every single person has been coming in with a, with a self-liquidating offer funnel. And so I always like, I always like see the trends like for like firsthand, because I'll get an influx of people. Like right now, my premium program is full of almost everyone who has like a self-liquidating offer that had a, a webinar funnel. And, you know, 
I always like tell them, I was like, whatever you're doing is going to work. It all comes down to the offer, right? It doesn't matter mm -hmm. whether it's a webinar, a self-liquidating offer or whatever. Like if you're, if the offer is on the other end of it is not good, like nothing that we're going to do in the front end is actually going to, <laughs> is going to fix what's, you know, what's broken on the back end. But do you, are you seeing any trends or are you, are you still think that you're seeing more people gravitating towards that mini, uh, the mini workshop kind of trend? Well, I think what we are seeing, and I've seen this for a couple of years now, I have seen more and more people in the internet marketing space, digital marketing space, start to talk about the importance of offers. So there's a lot of people that are that are putting emphasis on, doesn't matter what the funnel is that you've got, you have to dial in the offer. And this is probably the best way to explain this a whole offer concept because people do get tripped up and they say, oh, well, do I need to change my business or do I need to do X, Y, and Z? It's like, you're talking about your client that runs a challenge, right? A challenge is an offer. Like that's an offer. Like people, people like to buy into challenges. They like to participate in challenges because it's like, okay, I'm going to try and get this certain result, right? An ebook is an offer, right? And so it's all about coming up with that that core trigger that gets somebody to say, okay, yes, like I want to, I'm interested in this. Like a lead magnet is technically an offer, but when we write offers, it's like, no, we want to like, we want to attract buyers. So whether that's like done through our messaging, like, Hey, I want to help you do X, Y, and Z. If you're interested, let's hop on a call or self-liquidating, you know, low ticket um, you know, trip wires, whatever you want to call them, mini workshops, all that stuff is um, those are offers. And so I do think that the market is heading towards, um, much more awareness of being educated on what offers are and the importance of offers. And so whether that trend continues towards low ticket, whether that continues towards who knows, it's always going to shift. Um, in terms of advertising, we are seeing more and more people try and get to YouTube and we are seeing people go to YouTube. So that is becoming a little bit more, uh, a little bit more saturated, saturated, but I think Facebook, to be honest, is always going to be the king because of the ease of just getting an ad up on Facebook. Like somebody yeah. who doesn't know much about it, like they can stumble their way through getting an ad on Facebook versus YouTube. I mean, AdWords is just so freaking, the user interface is so confusing. Um, you got to write it, you know, you got to film a video, then you got to, you know, it, it's the barrier to entry is just a little bit higher than it is with Facebook. And so, you know, we are seeing a lot more people try YouTube, but they're still sticking with Facebook, even after all of the attribution issues and tracking issues that we're running into. And so, um, you know, I'm hoping that it weeds out the, you know, it, you know, you'll, you'll see some of the weak players fall out. And the strong ones will continue to rise to the top, but that happens with everything. Uh, but yeah, it's it's um, that's the trend that I'm seeing right now. Um, we're seeing a few more people, you know, talk about TikTok ads and whatnot. Uh, but I, I think we are going to see a trend where we get a lot of these kind of micro influencers die out uh, because what they've been teaching is not as effective anymore and they just aren't adapting or they don't care to adapt and that's totally fine too. So that's where I see the marketplace heading. Yeah. I'm seeing so many people who were very prominent in the marketplace, like almost drop completely off the face of the earth. Like I always tell my students, I get excited when these things happen because like back when I worked in TV, I couldn't target my audience, right? The best targeting we could do is like, okay, if we want to run like a raunchy, you know, late night news promo, we're going to run it in Mari, right? That was the, that was the, the, the targeting that we had to do in television. I didn't get to pick, you know? And so like, I always tell my students, the two things that I'm going to be, you know, really hammering on them, you know, throughout the rest of this year is, you know, omnipresence, and two, going cookie-less, right? Because like making sure that your audience knows like with list building or even just being super present using simple video ads and stuff like that. And so that's th those are kind of some of the ways that I'm like trying to transition my students to where like they're not freaking out so much, right? You probably have a lot of your clients that freaked out when all of the changes happened and all of the ends and stuff like that. And we just have to learn how to, how to adapt to that kind of so um, I know today, like you were super gracious with your time. Thank you so much for 
for getting here because I know my students are going to are going to enjoy this jam that we that we did. But um, I do want to make sure that like because there's there's two of your your programs that I always send people to. One is the power offer training. It's like thirty seven dollars is like the like literally like I always tell people like. And that's something like I give to my my agency clients, my premium clients. I'm like, here's the link like go buy this, like, this will be the most like valuable thing that you could do to help yourself. Because like, and I always tell my students, you know, even if you want to hire an agency to do your ads, do all of this stuff first, because like, it's so much easier to delegate to an agency because some agencies are really good at strategy. Some are really bad and just are just like button pushers, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But we, if we go in and we give an agency our power offers that are already converting, you know, thing. And so that's why I always tell people like, you know, at least learn how to do ads yourself so that you can delegate. Um, Joel's like workshop. I, I have probably sent out that link, no lie, like probably hundreds of times over the, over the course of the year, because I'm like, no, like you need to go, go take this. You need to go take this, but you also have a little higher ticketed course that shows them how to transform their offer um, into a mini webinar, correct? Is that, is that, you still yeah, have that so, offer? Yep. So like really the, my customer journey goes like this, right? You know, the power offer workshop helps somebody dial in their messaging. And, um, you know, I even showed, so I just redid, refilmed, um, the power offer workshop. It's called power offer 2.0. So now it's not like workshop recordings. It's actually like bite-sized video chunks. Um, I showed people how to turn a power offer into a power offer campaign. So you can launch that to your organic audience, you know, once a month, you know, once you get one that converts, like how do you do that on a consistent basis? Right. So that's all about developing your messaging, developing an offer that converts and, uh, and then converting a handful of, you know, your first couple of clients. Right. I mean, I've got clients that have launched this to their list and they have done so I just had another consulting client sign up with me again. Uh, the first time we worked together, we launched a power offer to his list. He did eighty thousand dollars in two emails. So that's I no mean, ads. So, that's just sending the power offer, like what what I we were just talking about, like just sending it as an email. Just as an email, yeah. I mean, so that's like the beauty with the power offer, and that's one of the things that I talk about is you can use a power offer on any medium, any platform, LinkedIn, Facebook, social media. We had a client take out a magazine ad and she wrote a power offer. Literally, if I offered you X, Y, and Z for you in whatever, um, would you take me up on that offer? It was, a, it was a magazine ad, it was awesome. So it works on any platform, which is really, really cool. So that was just refilmed. You know, I, I put some new content in there that's, hey, what happens if your power offer bombs? What happens if it doesn't work? Like, it's all about dialing in your messaging, right? And that's primarily for an organic audience. Like, so you can push that to an organic audience and, and get clients. When you're ready to turn that into an evergreen campaign with paid traffic and funnels, that's when we go into the, the secondary product, which is high ticket courses, where I teach them how to um, you know, develop a mini, you know, take that power offer, build, pair that with a mini webinar campaign and turn that into an evergreen appointment generating system. Um, and so that's what high ticket courses is. And, and if you go through the power offer workshop funnel, you'll be offered um, to join, you can join high ticket courses right away. We have tons of payment plan options. Um, you know, as of recording this, we have a $7 trial that you can join the program. And then we split it out over 12 monthly payments. Um, don't know when this is going to be live, but we are testing the different payment plan options right now. Just So just to be fully transparent, if you see um, something different when you go through the funnel, just know it's because we're testing it. And uh, But right now it's a $7 trial and then 12 payments. And then if you wanted to take the pay in full option, you get a 50% discount. So you can join that after you join the Power Offer Workshop. And um, yeah, that's the uh, those are the two primary primary programs that we've that we've got for this. The number one thing that I just try to make clear is, um, you know, Power Offer can be done organically, and we we want everyone to test it off or, out organically. When you're ready to go to paid traffic, I mean, you can also turn that into paid traffic, but you know, it's you have to pair like if you go organic you can do that without a funnel like and i highly recommend you actually do it without a funnel like just make it conversational get them on a call and close them because it's a sales like it's a sales message like well that's actually a good question that like do you have time for just one more quick question sure I know, i'm trying to be mindful um like you just said because i think this is a question that comes up a lot is how do you know when you're ready to go like how much should you be making off of your power offer organically before like even considering paid traffic. 
Yeah, so this probably isn't the answer that you're looking for, but it's all going to depend. Uh, you know, full transparency. When I mentioned my previous client earlier, he sent two emails out to his list, made $80,000. He had a very strong list. He had a very warm relationship with that list. And so, um, and he had thousands of people on that list. I don't know exactly how many, but it was in the thousands. I don't think it was 10,000, but it was plenty of people on, on the list. If you're just getting started out, you know, or, you know, when I did $50,000 in my first power offer, you know, I had a warm audience. I didn't have a large audience at the time, but I had a, a warm audience of people who knew who I was, who knew, like they followed me for webinar material. So I had, you know, a decent, um, a decent sized audience who would take me up on that offer. So I mean, if you're just starting out and the people on your social media following it and are not your ideal clients, or you don't really have a list yet, like, you know, of course it's going to be a little bit uh, it's going to be more of a struggle at first, but you know, so a, an exact dollar amount, it's hard to say, but the number one thing that I can say is you, you'll know when it hits, like you will know when you get an offer that, that hits, because you should know roughly how many people are actually in your target market that are in your following, whether it's email list, whether it's social media, you name it. Um, my client, Dave, uh, you know, he is a financial advisor. And he works specifically with millennials and shows them how to, you know, take care of their finances and set themselves up for success. You know, he, uh, he signed up with me for consulting, you know, a while back and we made some progress and then he went off and he, he loves to do social media. Like that's his primary lead gen. I'm like, that's, that's cool. Whatever. Right. Um, he was spending some time trying to get paid traffic to work. And, you know, after a while he got frustrated. And so he actually just put out this power offer that was like, how did the story go? He got frustrated because he was talking to people and um, he was talking to his leads and a lot of them were just, you know, tire kickers and like just non-committal. And so he kind of like out of frustration, he put out a frustrated power offer posting. I'm sick of these people who never have any urgency and blah, 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 blah. And it was a power offer. So like he made an offer in the post and he did $70,000 from that power offer post. And he's like, Oh my God, like, I think I, I finally hit a nerve. Like I finally, like the angle that it took was, was incredible. And so, um, you'll know when it hits, like, you'll know when you've got one that people, that people want. So that's the best, that's the best advice that I can give is like, you know, cause it's, it's usually so dramatic that it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's like, Oh, I did this and I made X number of dollars. Like, okay, I should do more of that. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm Glad you, I'm glad you said that because I know that there's so many because I, I get these questions all the time because like, you know, because every coach teaches different things. Right. And so I get a lot of people and they're like, well, you know, such and such coach told me that I need to make X amount of dollars before I could be running Facebook ads. Right. Where a lot of people like don't have time to like sit there and like, you know, do the organic stuff. And it's like but I always tell people like if you have a high ticket offer, like I was on a call yesterday with one of my private clients. And we've gotten her a certain place organically. And she was like, you know, are we, you know, I, I just don't know if I want to spend ads. And she's got a $35,000 offer, right? I'm like, would you be willing to spend $10,000 to acquire one $35,000 customer? And she's like, yeah, I'm like, watch this. <laughs> and I just like ran her through the entire, you know, like I was like, I did the numbers like, Hey, let's divide that. Let, let's say you're even spending. Cause I know with like the, the sales funnels, your lead costs are a little bit higher because you are getting those people who are raising their hand saying, yes, I want that versus, oh, I want this free webinar, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, even if you're paying like $20 per lead, you're going to get 500 leads if 10% of those eventually book, you know, an app, fill out an application and you get 25 people on the phone. You don't think you could sell more than one or two of those people that are on the phone, but it's like, people don't sit down and like, you know, figure out the math and, and all that's required. And that's like, kind of like the benefit of like having a high ticket offer versus a low ticket. And so I, I like getting all of the different um, advice from people because it's interesting that a lot of people tell people that you shouldn't be running ads unless you make like $20,000 a month, you know? Yep. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's definitely a mindset shift. Once you understand the difference between uh, lead gen and, and, um, and sales development. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I, I, I truly appreciate it. This is, this is like Disneyland for me. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. It was a blast. Yeah. Thanks for singing my praises and, Keep telling people about it. <laughs>
Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially now that I've got some training. Um, I've been, I've been sending out the, cause like that one podcast, I, I mentioned you and I was like, Ooh, I'm going to break in. Like I actually recut a part of my podcast where I was like, this is going to be a, this is going to be a promotion for Joel Irway. Cause I just mentioned him and I have an affiliate link for it. Go and like, I literally just did. I was like, I'm ta- I've been talking about his power offer. I was like, go into my, and I, I got a couple, I saw on the thing it like marks some sales. I was like, dude, see, this is why, this is why I need to do it more. Just like awesome. drop, drop one of your links. So, cause like cool. I said, I talked, so cool. Thank you well, so thank much. Thank you. Absolutely.